Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So our topic for today will be all about recapitalization and quasi-reorganization. So let's start with recapitalization. So recapitalization occurs when there is a change in the capital structure of the entity. So sir, ano pong nangyayari dyan? Well, dito sa uh, recapitalization, ang nangyayari lang naman is that the old shares are actually retired. Once again, the old shares are retired and apparently new shares will be issued, new shares will be issued to our shareholders. Okay? So, lahat ng lumang shares natin, ikakancel muna natin or i-retire and then mag issue po tayo ng mga bagong shares. Ano ba? So, sir, what are the typical recapitalization? Well, lima lang naman to, no? Actually, anim, pero pinagsama ko na yung dalawa. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, yung una, number 1, is yung tinatawag po natin na change from par to no par next meron tayong tinatawag din na change from this time no par to par pangatlo will be the reduction of what reduction of par or stated value pangapat is yung tinatawag po natin na share split or madalas tinatawag din siyang split up no then last but not the least is yung tinatawag po natin na reverse share split. And then minsan tinatawag din siyang split down. Okay ba tayo dyan? So these are the five typical recapitalization. Okay? So sabay natin i-discuss itong number one at number two. So kapag nagkaroon ng change from part to no part, anong gagawin natin? All you have to do here is to compare the original issue price. Again, i-compare mo lang naman. Yung original issue price, saan? Ikaw, compare po natin yan sa par or sa stated capital. Okay? So, itong stated capital or par capital na yan, yan na yung bago. Ah. Okay? So, here, if the original issue price is higher than the par or the stated capital, situate here na meron po tayong kailangan ni credit on our journal entry. So, sir, anong i-credit natin? Will credit share premium recapitalization. Recapi capitalization. Okay ba tayo dun? But, if the original issue price is actually lower than the par or stated capital, all you have to do here is to debit the retained earnings account. So, kapag mas mataas yung original issue price, magkikredit tayo sa share premium recapitalization. Pero, pag mas mataas yung total par capital or yung bagong new or bago na nyo pa, di ba? Bagong stated capital, see to it that will debit rating earnings. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa reduction of par or stated value. So, here, kapag nagkaroon ng reduction in the par or stated value, see to it here, na magkakaroon lang tayo ng reclassification entry. So, sir, ano po yung reclassification entry natin? Our reclassification entry is actually to debit share capital and then to credit what? To credit share premium recapitalization. So, kapag binawasan po natin no, yung par value or yung stated value, a portion of the share capital will be reclassified to the share premium account. Wala na ba? Next, punta tayo sa pang-apat. Number four is yung tinatawag po natin na share split or split up. So, sito it na kapag share split at reverse share split ang pinag-uusapan, wala po tayong journal entry ah. We just have to prepare a memorandum entry. Ay ba tayo dun? So, kapag tinawag natin share split, once again, no, kapag po sinabi natin share split, see to it na here, the number of shares actually what? The number of shares actually increased and then apparently the par value or the stated value actually decreased. Okay? So, sir, example nga. Sige, magkaroon tayo ng example. Lagay natin dito number of shares. Okay? Lagay natin dito par, then lagay natin dito total, no? So, let's say, at the beginning, meron tayong 100,000 shares with par value of 50 pesos and stated uh, total value, of course, na 5 million pesos. Next, nagkaroon ng, sabihin na nating uh, 541 share split. So, kapag nagkaroon ng 541 share split, ladami po yung number of shares. So, from 100,000, magiging 500 thousand shares na po ito, then yung par value mababawasan naman. So, from 50, divide mo by 5, magiging 10 na lang. But, the total capital will still be equal, no? 
to 5 million pesos meaning even after the share split or any recapitalization no whether change from par to no par change from no par to par reduction of par or stated value share split at reverse share split ano man sa limang to the total shareholders equity before and after recap recapitalization will just be the same so hindi po magbabago right hindi pa hindi katulad ng pagmamahal sa ng crash mo na pabago-bago okay ba tayo dun? Now, punta tayo dito sa number 5. So, kapag tinawag naman po natin na reverse share split, eh, ibang usapan naman na po ito. Okay? Because here, sa reverse share split, number of shares actually what? Actually decrease. Okay? Kabaliktaran ng share split. And then, the par, or yung tinatawag po natin na stated value, ang mag increase dito. Luanag? So, magkaroon tayo ng example. Number of shares ulit. Then, we have par. Then, we have the total. So, let's say, meron tayong 100,000 shares pa din. Par value is equal to 50 pa din. So, this is equal to 5 million pesos. Okay? So, number of shares mababawasan. So, 100,000 divided by 5. 5, 4, 1 pa rin po tayo. Magiging 20,000 shares na lang yan. Okay? And then, yung par capital or par value magiging increase. So, 50 times 5 magiging 250 na to. But the total will be the same, equal to 5 million pa rin po. Okay? Eh sir, paano po kapag sinabi ng problem, 541 lang, hindi po sinabi kung split up po ba yan or split down. Kapag hindi sinabi ng problem, if it's split up or split down, we always assume na split up po yan. So if the problem is silent, sure split or split up ito ah. Okay ba tayo dun? So to apply into problems all these concepts, let's now move on here in illustrative problem number one. Okay? So here, during the current year, Black Widow Company declared a 5-4-1 reverse share split. Once again, kapag reverse share split, yung number of shares po natin, ano nangyayari? Nababawasan. And then apparently, yung par value po yung tumataas. Okay? When the market value of the share was 100, hindi po yan mahalaga. Okay? Next, prior to the split, the entity had 100,000 shares of 10 par value issued and outstanding. So anong tanong dito? After the split, what is the par value of the shares? Once again, tumataas ang par value kapag reverse share split. So, kung dating 10, nagkaroon ng 5-4-1 reverse share split. See to it that the par value now will be equal to 50. That's why, Charlie, final answer, illustrative problem number 1. Again, illustrative problem number 1, Charlie will be the final answer. Okay? Next, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 2. So here, in illustrative problem number 2, the shareholders of Spider-Man Company approved a 2-4-1 split of the entity's share capital and an increase in authorized shares from 100,000 shares with 20 par value to 200,000 shares with 10 par value. So split up to. Okay? The shareholders' equity accounts immediately before the split shares were as follows. Share capital, 1 million. Share premium, $150, $1,350 ang rate in earnings. Requirement number one is what? Requirement number one, what is the balance of the share premium after the share split is affected? Once again, the balances of shareholders' equity accounts before and after capitalization will just be the same. So if $150 is the balance of share premium before the share split, $150 as well will be the balance of share premium after the split. Okay? Requirement two, What is the balance of the retained earnings after the share split is affected? Well, here, before and after, pareho lang din. Ibig sabihin, 1,350 or alpha, final answer, requirement number 2. Okay? So, that is illustrative problem number 2. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa quasi or quasi reorganization. Okay? So, quasi reorganization is actually a permissive but not a mandatory procedure. Once again, this is a permissive. We are permitted to do this, but this is not a required procedure, no? Under which, ano nangyayari dito? Well, a financially troubled corporation restates its accounts and establishes a fresh start in accounting sense. So, parang walang nangyari, no? Ibig sabihin, magkakaroon ng fresh start ulit. I-restart natin or i-format po natin in accounting sense yung corporation. Maliwanag ba? Sir, paano natin yung gagawin yun? By restating the accounts, no? So, sir, lahat ba ng corporation pwedeng gumawa niyan? Hindi po lahat. Ano ba? So, sir, sino lang? 
yung mga financially troubled lang. Ibig sabihin, yung mga nahihirapan lang. Sir, paano natin malalaman na financially troubled ang isang corporation? Well, a corporation is considered financially troubled if and only if meron po siyang malaking balance ng deficit. Again, if meron po siyang deficit, we assume that the corporation is actually financially troubled. Pero if positive yung rating earnings yan, we can say na financially troubled yan. Okay? So, sir, anong ibang tawag sa quasi reorganization? Ang ibang tawag po dito is yung tinatawag po natin na corporate. Again, tinatawag din po ito na corporate re-adjustment. Okay? Because once again, quasi reorganization is a procedure wherein we are restating the accounts of the corporation. Anak ba? So, bago mo gawin ito, once again, before mo ituloy itong quasi reorganization, si to it, no, na dapat aprovado po ito nino. It must be approved by the shareholders. Once again, it must be approved, number one, by the shareholders. Number two, sinong pwedeng mag-approve? Creditors. Then, last but not the least, ito yung pinaka-importante. That is the Securities and Exchange Commission. So, it must be approved, no, by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Commission. Ganag ba? Now, wag, ko na, wag na tayo magpahirapan pa, no? Diretso na tayo sa procedures o papadaliin ko na lang itong mga procedures na ituturo ko sa inyo. Ganag ba? So, itong tatlong to, ang kailangan mo lang matandaan, no? So, number one is restate, no? Once again, number one, restate assets and liabilities, okay? To conform. Again, to conform with fair value. So, una mong gagawin is restate mo muna yung assets and liabilities ni corporation to conform with the fair value. Okay? Si to it, na kapag ina-adjust mo yung assets and liability, kailangan mong i-reflect yung adjustment. Again, reflect adjustment here in number 2. Saan? To retain earnings account. Okay? So, sa retain earnings po natin ipapasok lahat ng adjustment. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Okay? Then, number 3, if There is, once again, if there is still deficit, may natira pang deficit, no? After the corporate readjustment, what we'll do is what? What we'll do is, number one, if true recapitalization, to once again, if this is true recapitalization, what we'll do is we transfer, no? The share premium of the corporation to retain earnings. Ibig sabihin, para matanggal na yung deficit, we'll debit share premium and then we'll credit the retained earnings account. Because once again, our goal, our goal here is to eliminate the deficit. So, dapat yung deficit maging zero. Dapat yung retained earnings maging zero. Kaya siya natawag na fresh start. Kasi parang wala pang nangyari. Parang hindi ka pa nag-ooperate. Okay? Then, number two, no? Pwede rin naman na through revaluation mo ipasok or i-eliminate yung remaining deficit. So, if true re uh, revaluation tayo, once again, if true revaluation po tayo, The debit here is actually the revaluation surplus. And then the credit will still be the retained earnings account. So kapag may natira pang deficit after the uh, readjustment to fair value, si Tuit na tignan mo muna kung true recapitalization ba to or true revaluation. If true recapitalization, debit are, uh, share premium. If true revaluation, debit revaluation surplus naman tayo. Okay? So to apply to problems, all these concepts, let's now move on here in illustrative problem number 3. The requirement here is to prepare the necessary journal entries. Okay? So here, Pepper Corporation has suffered losses from operations for some time. Okay? The company decides to undergo a quasi reorganization which was approved by the shareholders and creditors of the corporation as well as the SEC. An appraisal of property, plant, and equipment was recommended on the basis of an unrealistic valuation of this asset. Once again, no, an appraisal of property, plant, and equipment was recommended. So, true revaluation po tayo. Okay? Ulitin ko, true revaluation po natin i-close yung remaining deficit, if any. Okay? Next, the following restatements and information are relevant to the quasi-reorganization. First bullet, a PPE costing 5 million With accumulated depreciation of 1.5, we will say in carrying amount is 3.5 million. Okay, so a PPE with cost of 5 million, accumulated accumulated depreciation of 1.5, 
are determined to have a fair value of 5 to 50. Then Pepper is using the revaluation model. Okay? So, see to it here, nag-increase yung carrying amount from 3.5 naging 5 to 50. So, magkano po yung increase? Well, the increase here, calculator please, that's 5 to 50 minus 3.5 or this is equal to 1,750,000. So, here, in the first bullet, our journal entry is to debit accumulated depreciation if elimination method po tayo. Pero kapag proportional method, will debit the PPE account, credit accumulated depreciation, and credit what? Credit revaluation surplus. Pero para mas mabilis, elimination approach po tayo. So, debit accumulated depreciation, then credit revaluation surplus equal to 1,750,000 pesos. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa second bullet. The inventory should be written down no? by 200,000. Once again, any adjustment will be reflected to the rate in earnings account. So, here, mababawasan pa ulit yung ating rate in earnings. Sir, bakit? Kasi, right, babawasan natin yung asset, babawasan natin yung inventories. Eh. Okay? So, debit rate in earnings, credit, inventory, equal to how much? That is equal to 200,000 pesos. Okay? Bullet number 3, ano nangyari? Bullet number 3, the accounts payable amounting to 150 are not recorded in the account. So, debit retain earnings ulit kasi madadagdagan yung liability eh. And then, credit accounts payable equal to how much? That is equal to 150,000 pesos. Okay? Then, last bullet, the retain earnings has a debit balance of 1 million prior to class I reorganization. Okay? So, beginning balance of Retain earnings or deficit, once again, deficit yan, kasi debit balance, no, is equal to 1 million. Next, second bullet, no, nagkaroon pa ulit ng debit na 200,000 sa retain earnings, so minus 200. Bullet number 3, dinebit mo ulit by 150,000, so minus 150. So, ibig sabihin, ending balance of deficit will now be equal to 1,350,000. Okay? So, the journal entry here, in the fourth bullet now, is to debit revaluation surplus because if true revaluation tayo, sa revaluation surplus po natin isasara yung deficit. Then, credit retain earnings para totally mawala na yung deficit equal to how much? That is equal to 1,350,000 pesos. Ay ba tayo din? Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 3. Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 4. Pepper Company has suffered losses from operations for some time. The company decided or decides to undergo a quasi-reorganization that was approved by the shareholders and creditors of the corporation as well as by the SEC. As a result of the quasi-reorganization, the company's PPE with a total carrying amount of 2 million have been determined to have a recoverable amount of 1.5 this time Right, mas mababa ang recoverable amount. So, this time, meron po tayong impairment loss and that's equal to 500,000. Again, this will result no, to impairment loss of 500,000. Okay ba tayo doon? Hopefully, nagkakaintindihan pa tayo. No? Next, ano nangyari dito? Well, before the write-down of assets, the shareholders' equity, once again, before the write-down of, uh, write of assets, the shareholders' equity balances are as follows. Okay? Ordinary share, 50 pesos or 3 million total value. Share premium magkano? The share premium is 150,000. Then ano pa? Retain earnings is negative 600,000 pesos. Nagkakaintindihan pa ba? So ano pang sabi dito? The company will redeem, once again, no? the company will redeem its 50 par ordinary shares and will issue equal number of ordinary shares with par value of 30 pesos. Okay? So, no requirement. The requirement here is to prepare the necessary journal entries. So, dito is start tayo dun sa journal entry no, para i-record yung impairment loss. Pero, i-diretso na natin yan saan? I-diretso na po natin yan sa retain earnings account. Okay? So, debit retain earnings account and then credit what? Credit accumulated depreciation to record the impairment loss of 500,000. Next, ano nangyari dito? 
Well, ni-redeem daw nung corporation yung 50 par ordinary shares niya, then nag-issue ng equal number of ordinary shares with 50 or with 30 par value. Well, 3 million po yung halaga ng ordinary share capital niya. Divide natin yun sa 50 pesos par, ilang shares to? 3 million divided by 50 or this is equal to 60,000 shares. Maluwanag ba? So, what's the journal entry here? The journal entry is to debit share capital. Again, debit share capital para dun sa 50 pesos na par equal to 3 million pesos. Credit share capital. Again, credit share capital para dun sa 30 pesos na par equal to magkano? Well, this is equal no? to 60,000 times 30 because equal number of shares now. So, 60,000 times 30, this is just equal to 1.8 million. Then, the excess will be credited, syempre, sa share premium account. So, credit share premium equal to 1.2 million pesos. Okay? Then, lastly, eliminate na po natin yung deficit. Well, meron tayong 600 and then dinagdagan mo pa ng 500,000. So, 1.1 million yung total na deficit. Again, the total deficit here is equal to 1.1 million. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Okay? So, dito, asahan mo ngayon na i-debit natin, syempre, yung share premium because this time, true recapitalization naman tayo. Okay? So, will debit share premium equal to how much? Will debit share premium equal to 1.1 million? That is 600,000 initial deficit. Then, dinagdagan mo ng 500. Then, credit retained earnings equal to how much? Credit retained earnings equal to 1.1 million as well because once again, kailangan nating i-eliminate yung deficit eh. So, after the quasi-reorganization, magkano na ordinary share capital? Ordinary share capital mo, 1.8 million na lang. Share premium magkano? Share premium will be equal, no? To 150 plus 1.2 million and then minus 1.1 million or that's equal to 250,000. Then, retain earnings, si to it na zero na po yan. So, total shareholders' equity will now be equal to 2 million, magkano? 2 million 50,000 pesos. Okay? So, that is quasi reorganization. So, hopefully, right, natuto ka, natuto ka sa lecture series natin about shareholders' equity. This is actually the last part. So, guys, sorry, no? Kung medyo, minsan, nauutal ako, hindi ko na ine-edit, no? Itong mga discussion natin. So, I hope, ma-appreciate mo pa rin, even though may mga slight errors tayo during our discussion. Hindi ko na kasi ine-edit para, syempre, face-to-face -face yung feeling. Okay? So, keep safe and God bless, guys. Bye-bye!